next is what we had already mentioned earlier that tells us about the mid-cycle estrogen peak. And that is that stretchy mucus. It actually comes from the cervical glands, um, which respond to both estrogen and progesterone. Their response to estrogen is to make this stretchy, clear, um, I call it egg white mucus. And the farther you can stretch a thread of it, the higher the estrogen level. It actually gives you a dose response. Yeah. The next item on the diary is constipation. And that isn't there necessarily because we think that there's an effect of these hormones on it. It's there in part because it's a common uh, sort of health thing. If you're constipated all the time, that's not healthy. Um, and it's there because there, there clearly are probably effects of these hormones on the intestinal system. The digestive system. But it's, yeah. It's, it would be, what about the opposite of, of constipation? Maybe more diarrhea. diarrhea is more. Mm -hmm. I would think common. Um, I don't know if it is more common. Diarrhea often goes with uh, cramps. Women mm -hmm. will say, I have, uh, I have diarrhea when I'm just about to get my period or when I'm getting my period. Mm -hmm. So um, a line on the diary to assess headache. And you can have headache of very different kinds, mm -hmm. you know, from bright lights, from uh, eye strain, from uh, tension, you know, the temples are, are, are hurting, um, or you can have a migraine kind of headache. And if it's a migraine kind of headache, we ask people to put a dot in the box as well as the number to characterize, I mean, it could be a three, but be a tension headache. But if it's a migraine, if you put a dot in the box, it tells us that that's a peculiar kind of headache. Mm -hmm. And again, most of the headache uh, predominance tends to be just before and around flow. And that's true of either the garden variety headache and of migraines. Migraines typically have a pulsating characteristic to them. They're also associated with nausea, sometimes with very light sensitive eyes. In general, it's something that you need to lie down for, a quiet room. Uh, the next is sleep problems. Now again, these may or may not be differing across the menstrual cycle. We found in perimenopause that it wasn't. It was any old time in the cycle. Um, and in some cases, it's an indicator of a stress situation. In other cases, it's an indicator of a hereditary tendency to sleep problems. So there's mm -hmm. many origins. But again, there may be menstrual cycle effects, and so it's useful to track. If you, you know, are a little wakeful at night, that'd be a one. If you're awake all night, that'd be a four. And what about if it's due to our kids? Waking us up? <laughs> uh, if it's due to your kids, then make a note down at the bottom says, uh, you know, a comment about up with the baby or, you know. Okay. The next three actually are hard ones for women to talk about because they're feelings. The first one is, is called feeling frustrated and actually the earliest diary which I made way back in the early 80s, I said feeling angry. But women said, I don't wanna, you know, I don't feel angry, I'm too nice for that kind of thing. So I changed it to frustrated which is a more common feeling not quite as har harsh as, as angry. Um, the next one is feeling depressed. And again, depression doesn't mean a clinical diagnosis. It means feeling a bit sad. It means feeling a bit blue. Things don't look as happy or sparkly or whatever as usual. And the final one is feeling anxious, meaning unsettled, nervous, uh, uneasy, you know, to you know, the full-blown, <laughs> can't sit still kind of thing. Like just being more sensitive, like more e easy to feeling, like whether mm -hmm. it be angry or sad or like irritable. Mm -hmm. Which one would that fall under in those feelings? That Irritable would probably be the frustrated, the frustrated one. Yeah. But I think it depends on the personality right. of the individual woman, which, which sensitivity she has. Right. Yeah.
I think there are effects on our emotional receptivity or responsivity that do relate to our hormones. We tend to to attribute good things to estrogen and bad things to progesterone and most of it isn't science-based. Mm. And if you think about that, um, that the way the pattern of the hormones are across the cycle, both hormones are there. Mm. So to say one is one and the other is mm -hmm. another is really hard. So that's the first section of the diary which orients the diary in time and space and in general I recommend taking keeping the diary record at the bedside someplace that's private so keeping it at night before you go to bed and um, if for example you're just tuckered out and you forget to do it one night just skip it don't try to remember don't don't try to say what what was that like and so doing it at night, you're remembering the day you finished, the day you've just finished.